Hello learners, welcome to NIOS. I am Yogesh Kumar. I am PGT Computer Science at FAPES Kuwait. Uh, today we are going to discuss programming in C++. We are going to see practically how to enter the programs and how to execute the programs. Objectives of today's class are editing C++ programs and then executing those C++ programs, types of errors in C++ programs and how to debug C++ programs. Debugging means removing the errors from C++ programs. First program that we are going to see is a very simple program, simply saying hello or hello world. You can see this program, you must have seen uh, such a simple program in the beginning of your uh, lessons in theory. Today we are going to run this program and slowly from here we are going to see how to improve on this program and how to write some other programs also. Now this is Turbo C++ IDE. In this IDE we are going to type the first program. So here we press Alt F, New. So a new program starts. Its name is no name 00.cpp by default. We shall save it with some other name. So let me type this program. So this is the first program that I have typed. Now I shall save this program and then I shall run this program. To save the program, let me go to file, save. Let me save it with the name p1.cpp. P1, if I give P1, then also it will be saved as P1.cpp only. CPP is the extension by default. I press enter. So now you can see here the program name has changed from no name 00.cpp to P1.cpp. Now let me run this program. I go to R, run, and then I click here run. When we executed this program, after, immediately after executing the program displaying hello world on the screen, the control came back to C++ IDE. So I was not able to view the output of my program. Now let us see how, what change can we make to see the output of this program. Here we include another header file. Now this, from this header file we shall use a function get ch. Now let me run this program. First I save this program, save and then I run this program, run it. Now I can see the output, you see it shows the output twice, hello world, hello world, in the last line you can see that. Hello world, first hello world is there from the first execution uh, which we could not see. The second hello world is there from this current execution, if I run this program again, now it shows hello world third time. Again I run this, every time it will show hello world. Now it has shown hello world four times. Now what I want to do is, I want to clear the screen whenever this output is shown, so that there is no confusion about how many times has the program been run. Execution of this program once should show me the output only once, not the previous outputs also. So what I can do is, I can include a function, clrscr. Now if I run this program, on the output screen I see only my out program's output, hello world. Now let us understand this. I have included two header files, iostream.h and conio.h. From the iostream.h, I am using the uh, object C out. This object is used to display something on the computer screen. And from the header file con io.h, I have used the functions clear screen and get ch. CLR SCR function is there to clear the screen. So whenever I want to run my program, I want that previous output should get clear and it shows me the current output only, the output from my program only. And after showing the output, I want the program to pause so that I can see what is the output of my program. Now here, the function getch is there which takes a character as input from the user. So when I run this program, clear screen clears the screen, see out hello world displays hello world on the screen. When getch is executed, it waits for the user to enter a key. We are using the function getch, 
uh, this function get ch waits for the user to enter a key from the keyboard. Now, this is the main point of confusion. Many students assume that get ch function is there to view the output, to show the output. No, it is not that. It is there to input a character from the keyboard. So, when get ch function is there, it is waiting for me to enter a character from the keyboard. So, the output is shown and now the computer is waiting. I can view my output as long as I want and then when I press any key, it will come back to the IDE. Let us run it once again. Now, hello world is there. Now, computer is paused at get ch. Now, get ch function is waiting for me to press a key from the keyboard. I can press this key anytime. Hello world, I have seen my output, I checked my output, everything is fine. So, I can press any key from the keyboard and I am back to the IDE. Now, let us see another program. Input two numbers and find their sum. So, I will start a new program, Alt F to go to the file menu and then new. So, this is new program. Now, new program is with the name no name 01.cpp. Now, let me save it with the name, let me say p2.cpp. Now, here again I type hash include iostream.h because I want to uh, use the object c out and c in hash include con io.h because I want to use the functions clear screen and get ch clear screen at the beginning of my program and get ch at the end of my program. Now, in this program I want the user to enter two numbers and my program will display the sum of these two numbers. So, input two numbers I have to declare two variables. I can declare the variables a and b of integer type. If I am sure that my numbers are going to be without any fractional part, without any decimal part. If I think that the numbers can have fractional part also, it means the numbers can be in decimal also, then I should declare my variables to be of float type. So, let me say float a b. Now, c in as c out is there to display the output c in is there to take input from the user c in a to input first number c in b to input second number c out sum equal to a plus b and then get ch so that I can view my output. In the beginning, let me give clear screen. Now, I run this program. Before running the program, we must always save the program because sometimes the program crashes and then if we have not saved the program, then we have to do type the same program again, the whole thing. So, it is always a very good practice to save the program before executing the program. Save it. Now, execute it. I go to run and then I uh, click at run or I can press this shortcut control F9 also. For example, here I say control F9, my program executes. Now, here the cursor is blinking, it is paused at C in A, it is waiting for me to enter a number. So, let me enter a number 12.34. Now, C in B, enter another number, let me say 25, sum is equal to 37.34. So, we have input two numbers and the computer has given me their sum. Now, when the cursor was blinking, let me run this program again, then uh, the things will be more clear. Now, here when the cursor is blinking, now how does the user know that it is waiting for uh, the user to input a number or input a character? So, why is it waiting? So, the user, so when I run this program, the cursor is blinking. This blinking cursor means what? I know that I have written this program to input two numbers, but how does the user know? Suppose uh, someone else runs this program, how will that person know that computer is waiting for him or her to enter a number? So, it is confusing. I enter a number, then again I have to enter a number, then computer gives a sum. So, to remove this confusion, it is always better to proceed scene with C out. It means before C in A, here the user will have to enter a number. Before that, let me give a proper message to the user. 
see out, enter a number, here also see out, enter another number. Now, if this program is run, now you see this output is much more clear than the previous output. Enter a number, now the user knows that the user has to enter a number. Let me say minus 98, 12.54. So, this is the sum of two numbers. So, this is how uh, we find the sum of two numbers, we input the data and then we process the data and we find the output. Now, suppose I, when I type this program, I commit a mistake here. I forget to put the semicolon. Here there was semicolon. Suppose I forget to enter the semicolon. Suppose here instead of A plus B, I type A B, some typing mistake is there. Then let us see what happens. I run this program. I get two errors. Press enter. First error is declaration syntax error, declaration is not complete. It is showing me the error in the third line after clear screen float a, plus a b and then in c out it is showing me the error, but the error is in previous line at the end of the previous line declaration syntax error. It means declaration is not correctly made, it has not been terminated by semicolon. Second is undefined symbol a b. Computer assumes that here at c out sum equal to a b, a b is a variable but a b has not been declared as a variable. So, it says undefined symbol a b. Such errors which are displayed by the computer by the compiler are known as syntax errors. So, my program contains two syntax errors, whenever there is syntax error I can easily remove it. I should observe my program and then I should remove those errors. I can take clue from the error messages shown and then correct those errors and then I run the program again. Now, my program is running properly. So, here the sum should be 57.1, but it is showing 57.099998. Uh, you do not bother about it. Uh, this minor mistake may be there, those things can be explained later, not in this class. So, now I am finding the sum of these two numbers. Let me do it like this a minus b. I want to find the sum, but by mistake I type a minus b instead of plus I type minus. I run this program, sum is minus 22. Now, my program is running properly, it is not showing any error, it is giving the output also. Now, this is another point of common mistake which the students get. When they see that the program is running and it is giving the output, they assume that the program is correct. But here it is giving sum equal to minus 22, my program is not correct, my output is not calculated properly. So, what we should do is whenever we get the output from a program, we, we must always verify whether the output is correct as we expected. Now, I entered the numbers 12 and 34, so the expected output is 46, but is showing minus 22. It means there is some flaw in my program, but that flaw is not being shown by the computer. So, I have to observe my program very properly. So, carefully if I observe my program, I am inputting, inputting two numbers and then sum O, oh, there is a mistake. Instead of minus, it should have been plus. So, such kind of errors which are there in some formula, which do not result in any runtime error on, or syntax error, these are called logical errors, because these are the errors in the logic of the program. We should very carefully observe the output which we are getting and we should also know what is the expected output. If the output that we are getting matches the expected output then it is fine, otherwise it means there is some logical error in the program and we should carefully observe each and every formula which is given and we should correct those errors. Now, if I run this program 12 and 34, so sum is 46, now it is fine. Now, suppose I want to find the quotient of these two numbers. Suppose I want to find A upon B. So, let me say A upon B is equal to A 
divided by b. Now I run this program. Enter number twelve. Enter the number forty-five. A upon b is zero point two six six seven. Now it seems to be correct, but when we are running the program, we should test the program with such values that we can easily check whether the output is correct or not. For example, let me say twelve divided by three. So our expected output is four. Yes, I am getting four, so it is fine. Let me do it like this. Let me enter thirteen divided by five. The output should be two point six. Yes, it is two point six. Fine. So my program is working properly. There is no logical mistake in this program. Let me say thirteen divided by zero. Oh, there is some error. It is showing zero e. Some output it is showing. But basically, this is the runtime error division by zero. So what we should do is there are some errors, or uh, let me show you a very clear error. Let's write another program to find the square root of a number. I'm making corrections in this program only, changes in this program only. So enter a number. And then let me say square root of the number is square root of e. Now let me run this program. I first I save this program with another name because P two is to find the sum of two numbers. File, save as P three dot cpp. Now this P three dot cpp. I run this program. There is one error. Yes, it says function sqrt should have a prototype. Whenever we get this type of error, it means we are using some function, and the corresponding header file has not been included. Square root is a function which is there in the header file math.h, so we should include the header file math.h in this program. Include. Enter a number. Now again, I should enter a number for which I can easily verify the output. Twenty-five. Square root of the number is five. Again, I run this program. Save this program. File, save. Now I run this program. Enter a number. Let me say one two three. Uh, square root of one twenty five is. Uh, let me say two twenty three. Square root of two twenty five is fifteen. It should be fourteen point nine something. So my output is correct. Again, I run this program. Let me say minus nine. Now it says domain error. Square root of the number is zero. Now this type of error is runtime error. What is runtime error? We are executing a program. There was no syntax error. Program was running fine. But at some point, it encountered some input for which it cannot do the calculations. So number is there, but on those numbers, calculations cannot be performed. So that type of error, which results in crashing of the program, and program will not run further, such errors are called runtime errors. So when there is runtime error, we should see uh, where is the mistake. When there is runtime error, it is due to some miscalculations, the calculations which cannot be performed. Here it is square root of a. Computer cannot calculate square root of a negative number. So what we should do is. Before we are doing anything like this, we should exclude the exceptions. Now the exception is that negative number square root cannot be calculated. So let me do it like this: If my number is less than zero, then C out. So square roots of 
negative numbers are not defined in C++. Otherwise, calculate the square root. Let me run this program again. First, I should save this program, file, save, run it. Now, if I give a number 56, post number, yes, it is fine. Again, I run this program. I give a negative number. Now, there is no runtime error. It clearly gives me the message square root of negative numbers are not defined in C++. So, this is how we handle runtime errors. Now, what we saw was typing a simple program and then what are different types of pro, uh, errors, the syntax error we saw, we also saw logical error and this runtime error. These are three types of errors which are there in the programs. And then how to execute the programs, we have also seen how to use clear screen and get ch. Now, let us see another program to find the total surface area and volume of a cylinder. File, new, so no in 0 to, let me save it as, save as p4.cpp. So, I know that I have to give clear screen first, then total surface area and volume of a cylinder. So, I need to store the values of radius, height, total surface area and volume. These are the four values which I shall be needing in my program. So, I should declare four variables, float, let me say r for radius, h for height, to t for total surface area or let me say tsa for total surface area and vol for volume. I input the values from the user, c out, enter uh, radius of the cylinder c in r c out enter height of the cylinder c in h now I calculate TSA total surface area is equal to now, total surface area of a cylinder is 2 pi r into r plus h, 2 into pi, value of pi let me take 3.14 into radius into r plus h and volume is equal to pi r square h pi 3.14 into radius into radius into height. So, then I can say C out total surface area is equal to whatever is the value of TSA and then and L to go to the next line and L and then C out volume is equal to volume and then get ch. So, I complete this program, I save this program again, save it and then run it. There are four errors, there are syntax errors, let us see what are those errors. Hash include iostream.h, unable to open include file iostream.h, there is spelling mistake, iostream, iostream.h. I run this program again, but before running I should save it, alt f, save and then I run this program again, there is one error, oh you see this spelling statement missing semicolon. So, in this statement semicolon is not there in the previous statement. So, I go there pi r square h and then I put a semicolon, run it, yes. Enter radius of cylinder, suppose radius is 2, height of cylinder, height of cylinder is 5. So, total surface area and volume have been calculated. You can verify the output. If the formula are correct, the output is also correct. So, this way we can type different programs. We have to save the programs and we have to debug the programs many times. So, this is how practically we run the programs using Turbo C++. Now, I am closing it.
So, I am exiting from here. So, this program we saw, we also saw this program. So, children in today's class, we have seen these programs. We have seen how to include conio.h and how to use get ch. We have seen this program also, how to find the sum of two numbers. So, what we have learned basically is how to enter and edit C++ programs, how to execute the programs, what are different types of errors which can be there in the programs, runtime errors, syntax and logical errors. Errors in a program are known as bugs and the process of removing those errors is known as debugging. So, we have also seen how to debug the programs. Thank you students, I hope this class was really useful for you.